welcome back. So, so far what we have is given a matrix A, we can make two different subspaces from it. We can make the column space and the null spaces. And what we want to do just kind of in this short little piece is kind of compare the compare and contrast these two subspaces. Now the first thing to notice is that they're actually different subspaces. So in fact, if A is an M by N matrix, what you want to pay attention to is where both of these things live, right? We have that the column space of A lives inside of RM and the null space of your matrix lives inside of RN. So you can see if M and N are different, then they're definitely different sub, uh, subspaces because they don't even live in the same ambient space. But there's a bunch of different things, different characteristics between these spaces. And I want to highlight four, even though the textbook gives some more, I will highlight four in particular. So one difference is how they're defined. Okay, so the null space A is defined implicitly. Um, so what does that mean? Okay, you're given a condition, you're given a condition uh, a vector must satisfy. Okay, so in particular, that means that a vector x is in the null space if it satisfies the condition that a times x is equal to zero. On the other hand, the column space is defined explicitly. And by explicitly, I mean that we're given a way to construct all the elements inside of this set, namely the span of all the column vectors. So we actually are given this information if we're handed the matrix A. Now let's look at what a typical vector V and a typical vector in the null space and in the column space, let's see what it looks like. Well, a typical vector V in the null space has to satisfy A V equals zero. So this will be true for any vector you pick. And the other vector V is in the column space has the property that the system of linear equations ax equals v is consistent. So in the second case, what we're saying is v is in the column space is if you can solve this particular equation, namely ax equals v. What else can we say about the difference? Well, given a vector v, I'll say that it's easy to check if V is in the null space, okay? And why is it easy to check? Well, you just need to check if it satisfies this equation, right? So you just need to check that AV equals zero. You do one particular calculation. On the other hand, hopefully I left myself enough room up here. Oh, I, I think I can squeeze it down here. Let's see, it's hard. to check if V is in the column space of A, right? And why is that? What you need to do is you need to solve AX equals to V. And hopefully your intuition now of solving lots of equations tells you that solving this particular equation right here, the first equation, let me get my hand tool out here, solving this equation our checking is something equal zero is very easy, but solving systems equations can be hard. And what else can we say? Well, one thing that we know is the null space always contains the zero vectors vector because the zero vector always gets sent to zero. And we have a condition about when the null space A is equal to the zero vector. And that happens if and only if AX equals zero has only the trivial solution. Trivial solution. And similarly, and we actually kind of made this point just a couple minutes ago, is that the column space always sits inside of RM and we can actually characterize when we hit 
all the space, that happens if and only if. One way of saying this is that the columns of A span Rm. So these are kind of four little differences between the column space and the null space. And hopefully it helps you to kind of answer questions related to these two different spaces. So we'll take a, another break. And in the, in the next part of the lecture, we're going to talk about how the null space, column space are, show up when you look at linear transformations.